Dig that funky disco beat. Shout out to Sam, our internal artist here who came up with that new intro. I feel like I should be in a 70s cop show or something. We use jigs a lot. We use sheets of MDF and sometimes acrylic to make fixed trays that we can preload to put in our lasers. This makes our process faster and gives us reproducible results. But we're also making and engraving the same types of products every day, so this makes sense for us. Sometimes you just have a one-off piece that you want to get correctly placed on the laser. Or maybe you need to take it out and put it back in multiple times because you're painting it in between engravings. Or maybe you've got a large custom job for something that you'll probably never process again. In these cases, it's not worth your time or the material cost to make a real jig. This is the time for what we call a temporary jig. We used to do this all the time when we worked with flatbed printers in our previous business. The concept is pretty simple. You're going to put a cheap, thin material down on the laser's bed and just mark where your parts are going to be placed. If we were using a printer, we'd just put down some paper and print the outlines on it. You can do that with a laser, but paper is pretty thin and you can cut through it too easily when marking it. If you're using an unengraving table and not a downdraft table, your exhaust and air assist can shift it on you too. Cardstock would be a better choice than paper, but what we like to use is chipboard. It's very thin but dense and marks nicely in the laser. It's also pretty cheap. We'll include links to some examples in the description below. If you made the parts yourself, then you probably would have engraved the parts before you cut them out. So for this example, I would assume that the parts to be engraved were purchased or were provided by a customer. In other words, you'd just be adding the decoration to an already existing product. For this example, I used some core coasters that I had left over from a previous video. These were sourced from Amazon and we'll include the link to them in the description below if you're interested. I know that these are truly square as I've measured them before, but I forget the exact size, so I used a digital caliper to get an accurate measurement. They're approximately 3.92 inches in size, so I'll use that measurement later when I'm creating my design template. By the way, if you don't use a caliper, get one. They're really cheap and it's so much easier than working with a ruler all the time. We do most of our laser layout work in Corel Draw, so this is what I used here. The canvas was already sized to our default 40 by 24 inches, which is the bed size of our Trotec Speedy 400 lasers. The chipboard we use is 12 by 12 inches in size. It will be inserted onto the top left corner of the laser bed later, and the product will be placed on it, so I wanted to mark this area on the canvas. To do this, I dragged some grid lines onto the canvas to represent the exact dimensions of the area I was working with. So I knew my coasters were 3.92 inches square. I made boxes on my canvas to represent them, but made them just a little bigger. These are going to be the lines that get marked on the chipboard, so by making the size a smidge bigger, it will be easier to position the coasters within them. I also wanted them reasonably close together so the laser head wouldn't have to travel any further than was necessary on each pass. We have Corel Draw's default line color set to red, which is the color we use for cutting through materials. I changed the square's lines to blue, which is the color we use for marking materials. The artwork needed to be laid out in the same position as the coasters. I could have just brought the artwork directly onto this canvas and then centered them on the squares, but I didn't want them to engrave at the same time as uh, the marking on the chipboard. Turning on or off what does or doesn't get cut or engraved in the laser software is asking for a potential mistake. At least, that's my take on it. I'd rather send separate jobs to reduce the chance of a mistake. I added a new page to my file and then copied my squares onto it. They were positioned exactly the same as on the other page. I then dragged a PDF file of the artwork into Corel Draw. The images are grouped together, so I had to ungroup them. Then I centered each design onto a square. Once done, I deleted out the squares as I didn't need them anymore. I know the designs are registered exactly to the blue squares on the first page. So now it was time to get lasering. Before putting the chipboard in the laser, I marked what would be the top left hand corner. This isn't necessary, but if I were to remove it and want to use it later, I would know the correct orientation. I focused the laser on the chipboard, but then backed the laser head off a little. By defocusing the lens a little, I'll get a slightly wider, more obvious mark on the chipboard. The job was then sent from CorelDRAW to the laser software. And then the job was sent from the laser software to the laser, and the squares were marked on the chipboard. I put the coasters on the marked outlines, and then refocused the laser to the top of the coasters. Again from Corel Draw, the engraving job was sent to the laser software. I didn't mention it earlier, but we have black set up as our default color for engraving, in case you're wondering. 
The job was run, and if you watch, you can see that the designs are lined up perfectly with the coasters, exactly as they were in the software. After this is finished, if I wanted to, I could load another set of coasters on the same chipboard outlines and run the same job again. Or, I could just keep this piece of chipboard, and if I wanted to make more of these with different designs, I can just load it back into the laser, making sure it's pushed to the top left corner, and I'd be ready to go. Or, again, I could reuse the material for other temporary jigs by just marking over it again and again until there's too many lines and it gets really confusing. Now, we do call these temporary jigs because they're pretty disposable. However, you could certainly use them as more permanent solution if you wanted to. The reason we don't is because having to line up your parts on each outline, you increase the chance of something being a little off. The parts are also more likely to move compared to a jig with recesses because of the air assist blowing on them. It's also slower as you have to load and unload the jigs while they're in the laser compared to using more rigid and durable jig trays that can be preloaded and unloaded outside the laser. Whether you're new to lasers or have tons of experience with them, I hope this information was helpful. If you have any jig related questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and we'll do our best to answer them.